The centi-billionaire Elon Musk is one of the most prolific people of the 21st century, having reached the status of richest man in the world and founded, co-founded, or chaired some of the most significant companies in the tech sector. Like a child whose imagination was never disregarded as too unrealistic to achieve, Musk's hand in innovating across industries has created a network of incredible proportions, having a hand in everything from space travel to tunnel constructions within cities. With such an overwhelming amount of influence and seemingly endless ideas to revolutionize our world, I find myself asking a single question. Is Elon Musk creating Sephiroth? For most people, the correlation between these two subjects might seem nebulous. The famous one-winged angel from Final Fantasy VII is just that, a fantasy, right? And why Elon Musk? What does he have to do with this? To explain, we're going to take a quick dive into some of the businesses and projects Elon Musk has had a part in, and then address the soldier first class in question. Let's get started. Elon Musk's career has been a series of business venture after business venture, starting back in the 90s with a software company called Zip2 and later online financial services with X.com, a business that later became known by the name PayPal. After PayPal, Musk's focus went toward the stars with the Mars Oasis project, planning to build a greenhouse on the Red Planet, leading to the eventual formation of SpaceX, the private aerospace company that has since partnered with NASA and even the US military, producing rockets, running resupply missions to the International Space Station, and working toward further innovation in space travel and orbital installations. Musk bought his way into Tesla Inc. back when it was known as Tesla Motors during its first round of investing, becoming chairman of the board in 2004 and later its CEO in 2008. Focused on creating energy-efficient vehicles, Tesla has since expanded into energy storage and energy production, including the acquisition of SolarCity, a solar power company conceptualized by Musk in 2006, aiming to provide efficient and or clean energy solutions to fit various needs. Together, Tesla and SpaceX work together on other innovations as well, such as the Hyperloop Transportation System, a high-speed mode of transportation between major hub cities. Musk has also dipped his feet into civil engineering with his tunnel-creating enterprise called The Boring Company, artificial intelligence with research company OpenAI, and even neurotechnology with Neuralink, a venture focused on merging the human brain with artificial intelligence. In just a 20-year period, there's no question that Elon Musk and the organizations tied to him have made significant efforts in their respective fields. But what does that have to do with Sephiroth? By the end of Final Fantasy VII, spoiler alert, Sephiroth has summoned Meteor, and the planet itself is using what strength it has to withstand the impending threat and ward off those forces that have been causing it to die, going so far to even summon some giant monster-style protectors known as Weapon. While it is true that Sephiroth is the main villain people associate with Cloud and Final Fantasy VII, he's not the one who pushed over the first dominoes toward Calamity. The presence of these threats to the planet can all be tied to the actions of a single organization, the Shinra Electric Power Company. The Shinra serves as the actual main antagonist of Final Fantasy VII, starting from the very first moments of the game and persisting all the way to its finale. The Shinra's main contribution to the world is in the form of affordable power made possible through the use of its many Mako reactors. These reactors siphon the natural energy of the planet and convert it to a usable power for consumption called Mako. Through the abuses of these reactors, the planet itself is dying, and those living near these sites experience the consequences. The plants wither, the animals die, and the land itself grows barren. It is an ecological disaster. Compounding their influence is Shinra's private military force, known as the Public Security Division, whose operatives work to maintain order through force if necessary, not just within the city of Midgar, but also anywhere Shinra property exists, such as with the Mako reactors. As far as how they can arm this military force, we look to another division, the Shinra Advanced Weaponry Division, whose efforts primarily create the tools of war used by the company. The Shinra also has a space and aeronautics department, focusing efforts to the skies not just with planes, but also their own rockets meant for travel outside of the planet's atmosphere, with 26 rockets commissioned and tested before the discontinuation of their program. In addition, Shinra also has an urban planning division, which serves to both design and operate the day-to-day -day going-ons of Midgar. In the center of the most controversial work done by the Shinra is the Research and Development Division, whose name is fairly self-explanatory on the surface, but whose operations flirt with taboo on the regular basis, including bioengineering and other questionable pursuits. Now, I don't know about you, but when I look at the side-by-side -side checklist of Elon Musk's many affiliations and the Shinra Electric Power Company, I can't help but notice the overwhelming similarities. We're talking about a person whose repertoire includes power companies, space exploration, vehicle designs, urban development, and more existing in our real world. 
All that's missing is weapon development. Or at least it would be, if not for the fact that SpaceX has secured military contracts with the US Space Force. While these contracts are not explicitly for the design and construction of weapons, at least as far as we know, SpaceX has been contracted to deliver new satellites on behalf of the US military into the planet's orbit. And while his Twitter is something to take with a grain of salt most of the time, Musk generated a great deal of buzz in 2018 when he tweeted out the belief that it's time to build a mecha, one of the many designs and innovations also produced within the Shinra Electric Power Company. Then there's also the not a flamethrower, a blowtorch shaped like a gun that is not a flamethrower, but kind of actually is a flamethrower, which was developed strangely enough by the Boring Company and sold in limited quantities. To some extent, we can be thankful that these are all separate entities united by Musk's efforts, but ultimately independent. But the same cannot be said of the Musk Foundation, a sparsely detailed philanthropic branch of Musk's many initiatives. Its goals are very simply defined on its extremely minimalist webpage. Now, in this case, we have a wonderfully convenient mixture of all of the above in a single entity. So then, is Elon Musk the real world equivalent of President Shinra? And more importantly, is he on the same roadmap that leads to the development of a threat like Sephiroth? Well, no, not explicitly. Elon Musk, for all his merits and failings, at the very least has expressed his own concerns regarding the safety of things like AI development, and has claimed on many occasions his interest in the public good. At least, on the surface, from the perspective of his countless online defenders, Musk is just a cool guy who has a sense of humor and visionary dreams for the future, including colonizing Mars something he affirmed his commitment to once again after becoming the richest person on the planet. That said, the man and the companies tied to him aren't immune from criticism. Tesla Inc., to give just one example, has faced several internal and external controversies ranging from accidents involving their self-driving cars, spying on employees' phones, and reportedly unsafe workplace conditions. Musk himself has also made his own share of mistakes, including many gaffes on Twitter. In direct comparison, President Shinra has on many occasions operated in good faith as far as the public can tell, but is actually well aware of the nefarious nature of the Shinra's work. Looking at the current trajectory of Musk's business adventures between Neuralink and his other companies, I'd hazard a guess that in the near future we're more likely to see something similar to Metal Gear Solid's nanomachines or even something out of the Halo franchise. But assessing the growing presence these many companies have within and outside of the planet's atmosphere, just what would happen if these corporations went on unchecked even for just a few decades? In just 20 years, we've already seen SpaceX launch reusable rockets into space and make huge leaps toward innovating space travel. What more can we expect? And what dangers await? Even Musk himself has acknowledged the dangers of artificial intelligence, repositioning the message to be about the safe development of this technology, rather than just researching it with reckless abandon. For the sake of speculation, let's give Elon Musk the benefit of the doubt and assume he operates with only the best intentions. Can we say that that will still be the case 100 years from now, after his many different initiatives are put into the hands of others? How much influence can even one well-meaning person really have in perpetuity? If President Shinra's immediate successor intended to rule the world with fear, what sort of changes could come from Musk's successors? Could Musk's empire evolve over time into something more like the Shinra, and if so, should we worry about if a creation like Sephiroth will come to be? Well, if we look at the events that take place in Final Fantasy VII, that concern is a bit more realistic than we'd probably like to admit. At this point, we're going to finally talk about Sephiroth's creation. Sephiroth, for those who don't know, was a soldier created and raised to serve the Shinra in its efforts to expand influence. Though the original reason Sephiroth was created didn't quite pan out, the Shinra company found tremendous uses for him in other ways. Sephiroth was born after he and his mother were intentionally exposed to Mako energy and Genova cells. That is, the cells of a dangerous organism that crashed onto the planet some 2,000 years before the game takes place. It is the influence of Genova's cells that made Sephiroth so powerful, and he would go on to achieve incredible feats in battle. Denied a normal life and childhood, Sephiroth's discovery of the nature of his creation drove him mad, and the results were catastrophic with the entire town of Nibelheim being wiped out in his wake, an event that would later be known as the Nibelheim Incident, or the Sephiroth Incident. As events continue to unfold in the scenario, Sephiroth ultimately will rise to becoming the greatest threat on the planet, killing President Shinra and many others along his journey before threatening the entire planet with the impact of Meteor. It is here that we must review the chief concern. Could a creation like Sephiroth come from the legacy of Elon Musk's influence? Perhaps not Elon Musk himself would be the direct cause, but the same could be said of President Shinra. Indeed, it was not the president, but Hojo, 
the then head of research and development division that created Sephiroth in the first place. It is the enabling of those who are both capable and willing to do wrong that we must be most concerned with. While bioengineering isn't the name of the game at a glance, the innovations and goals being made with a company like Neuralink are extremely vulnerable to being exploited, and Musk himself has stated a great interest in making steps toward alleviating disorders like dementia and Alzheimer's on a genetic level. Who knows what other kinds of innovations and initiatives will be explored by Elon Musk and his cohorts in the future? At 49 years old at the time of this recording, the mogul is certainly not out of time or ideas. So just what hidden dangers loom on the horizon? Well, only time will tell. With all of this said, it's fair to say that irrespective of the ethics, the risk of creating a real-world Sephiroth does exist, even if it's not under the exact same conditions. There are simply too many similarities. As I worked my way through Final Fantasy VII, I kept finding myself thinking about real-world examples that came close to it, and almost every single time, my thoughts brought me to specific entities that exist in such extremes. Among them was Elon Musk. Now, keeping all of this in mind, I have a single request. No matter how much something may seem like it is for the public good, let's never forget the potential dangers as well. Keeping these sort of things in check is essential for our survival, not only individually, but socially. As cool as some ideas and innovations might seem, the cost they incur is sometimes impossible to recover. Let's avoid the creation of a Sephiroth and anything like him from happening in the real world. Accountability is everything, and blind ambition has oft been the path to ruin for many civilizations throughout human history. It's our job to do our part and pay attention to the danger. If Elon Musk's ambitions to colonize Mars are a reality, well, we might be finding ourselves in the promised land a bit sooner than we think. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and consider subscribing to support the channel. I'd also really like to hear your thoughts on this topic, so please be sure to leave a comment if you found it interesting or have something to share. Until next time, this is Stampi. Thank you for watching.